Hello and welcome to another in the Armchair Teaching Series. I've entitled today's teaching, Why Do So Many Bible Verses Seem to Contradict Each Other? I've subtitled it, Staying in Balance. Uh, now photography is my hobby and I pray that I honour God with the gifting he's graciously given me. If you've ever visited my photography website, you'll see many photographs that still give me great pleasure to look at. Uh, only those who take photography seriously will know that every picture there has been through an enhancement programme that's designed to bring out the very best in it. Software programmes such as Lightroom or Photoshop can have up to 25 horizontal sliders, all of which alter the photographs in certain ways. If I think the fields and the trees are not looking green enough, I might gently slide the saturation slider a little to the right, or if the photograph's looking too bright, I might slide the brightness slider a little to the left. You get the idea, I'm sure. If I move any slider too far to the right or too far to the left, the picture becomes unbalanced and doesn't reveal the finished image that I have in mind. <clears throat> so it is with teaching kingdom truth that there are many sliders to use. Uh, there's the love of God, the fear of God, repentance, uh, grace, mercy, holiness, humility, uh, the commandments, um, obedience, service, blessings, judgment, heaven, the coming wrath, hell, etc. And the master's hand alone knows when to nudge the slider a little to the left or to the right to produce the well, the well-balanced image that would reveal the image of Christ in us. We've all met Christians who are clearly out of balance. Uh, the world certainly has and is always quick to tar us all with the same brush. Uh, Bible teachers are human and prone to well-meaning errors of judgment. Yet, because of the influence we wield, we must never forget the warning in Scripture. James chapter 3, verse 1 says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Those like myself, who have been called to teach, must be aware that if we only use the comfort sliders, such as God's love, grace, kindness and mercy, we certainly tell the truth, but not the whole truth. And so we would not be developing the whole image of God uh, as he would desire. Likewise, if we only use sliders such as God's judgment, the coming wrath, the reality of hell, we would certainly be telling the truth, but not the whole truth. And so we would not be developing the whole image uh, as God would desire. And worse still, if we push any slider way too far to the left or way too far to the right and keep it there, then although we would be using a, a truthful slider, it would distort the whole image almost beyond recognition. It's about getting the balance right. Uh, God often spoke with deep emotion of his love for Israel, but they learnt that when they went badly off course in their covenant relationship with him, it produced a much-needed balancing response. In 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, the Apostle Paul explains in some depth that these things happened to them as an example and they were written for our instruction. Uh, in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, we, we read where Paul said to the elders from the church at Ephesus, I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Leaders and especially teachers must be able to confidently make the same declaration. A Bible truth could be likened to a train which runs smoothly on on, on, on two parallel tracks that never meet. Yet as long as the train stays on these twin tracks, they will always guide the train to its designated arrival point. And the following example from scripture might help to explain this. Uh, one track carries the truth about the sovereignty of God, while the other track carries the balancing truth about our free will, if you are willing, if you believe, if you hold to my teaching, etc. One, truth carries, one track carries the truth about our salvation being assured, while the other track carries the balancing truth, if we deny him, he will deny us. One track carries the truth about salvation by faith, while the other track carries the balancing truth about continuing to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, uh, and that faith without deeds is dead. Uh, one track carries the truth about the love of God, while the other track carries the balancing declaration, such as when Jesus said, I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after he is killed has power to cast into hell. I say to you, fear him. One track carries the truth about being declared holy by God, while the other track carries the balancing truth. Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. One track carries the truth about God's kindness, while the other track carries the balancing truth, declaring, see the kindness and severity of God to those who fail severity, but to you God's kindness, if you continue in his kindness, for otherwise you too will be cut off. Uh, one track carries the truth about uh, assurance of sins forgiven while the other track carries the balancing truth 
if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Uh, one track carries the truth about predestination, while the other track carries the balancing truth, God our Saviour, who desires all men to be saved. Uh, one track carries the truth about entering into our rest, while the other track carries balancing action words such as train yourselves uh, and labour and strive. Uh, one track carries the truth about being sealed by the Spirit, while the other track carries the balancing truth. Uh, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Uh, many of us have our theology resting immovably on one track only, and so we ignore the other track or attempt to explain it away in order to disarm it, thus bringing everything safely into line with our single-track theology. Even great men of God have done this. Uh, John Wesley was a, a champion of Arminian theology which denied predestination and preached that, that God's sovereignty and man's free will are compatible, while George Whitfield, who lived and ministered at the same time in history, uh, was a moderate Calvinist who believed in predestination. And both had Bible verses to support their position, both preached in Britain and America, and both often preached to tens of thousands of people at one time. Almost certainly both had equal success in bringing many, many thousands to Christ. And when George Whitfield left England in 1739, he was the recognised leader of the Evangelical Awakening, and he entrusted his thousands of followers to John Wesley's care. Sadly, when he returned in early, early 1741, he found that as he said, many of my spiritual children will neither hear, see, nor give me the least assistance, and some of them sent me threatening letters that God will speedily destroy me. Well, what had happened? Well, while Whitfield was away, Wesley had powerfully preached against Whitfield's predestination theology. Whitfield was forever gracious to Wesley and always greatly honoured him, but Wesley was not as quick at bridge building. Eventually, though, after many years, uh, they agreed to differ and Whitfield was finally welcomed to preach among Wesley's societies. Although Whitfield was undoubtedly the initial leader of the Methodist movement and the initiator of many of its innovations, he deliberately chose to hand the leadership over to Wesley rather than see the movement divided. Uh, God's Spirit had clearly rested equally on both of them. You see, the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit, not the sword of man, and so the Spirit of God knows when to put more weight on one track than the other. Uh, and teachers must understand and be sensitive to this. Uh, at a massive Christian conference way back in the early 90s, I heard one well-established pastor explain the balance this way. He said, Let's say next Monday morning a young man comes to my office in a very emotional and fearful state, declaring he had got his girlfriend pregnant and was deeply distressed that he had let God down. Uh, the pastor said, I can open God's word and bring him much-needed comfort. That is, uh, as he is godly sorrow and is genuinely repentant, he can be forgiven. Then the pastor continued, however, let's say the following Monday morning another young man comes to my office with a half smile saying, oh dear pastor, guess what, I've gone and done it again, got another wee girl pregnant, I'll praise God for his grace. Then the pastor said, I can open God's word and put the fear of God into him and let him know he's in very great spiritual danger. And I understood that. Forever after that, I understood the need for opposites in scripture, the rod and the staff. Uh, over nearly three decades of ministry to Christians, I've often needed both tracks to bring skewed lives into balance. If it helps imagine a high wire walker carrying a long balancing pole, as he veers too much to one side, he quickly slides the pole out to the other side to add weight there to bring him back into balance. Try standing on one leg and you'll find it hard to stay in balance for any length of time. Two legs of equal length in the at ease position it brings immediate balance. Uh, let me finish with Luke chapter 12, verses 4 to 7. And you'll see Jesus using two opposites to bring balance in. I've already referred to one half already. Well, first, uh, Jesus uses one truth track where he says, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and that, that can do no more. I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Oh, that's pretty scary. Then the other truth track, bringing balance, where Jesus gently continues, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are still numbered. Don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. It's the wisdom of God. Uh, second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 70 says that all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, 
rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Uh, I hope this teaching encourages you to embrace those verses that so initially seem opposite to your understanding. Anyway, amen and God bless.